Thank you, Kelsey. So um, I hope you all can hear me okay. Um, my name is Leah Ekstrom. I'm a member of the uh, Cook County Community Fund. And this year is, I think, our fourth year partnering with Cook County Higher Ed to host this, uh, just hosting this event. Kelsey does it all. I just show up. Um, but just want to hope it's a great opportunity. We're happy to partner and, and always looking for other ways to bring grantors, grantees together um, in the community to help enrich um, our community. Yeah. Like I said, I'm part of the County Community Fund. We're an affiliate of the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation. Um, one of their, we have seven, and they'll be speaking after me as well, Michelle will. Um, but we do also do local um, grant funding each year. Um, last year in 2023, we gave over $47,000 or $40,000 in grants, sorry, but over 12 different um, local organizations. Our grant cycle begins um, January 1st-ish. Um, we open it up and then close on March 1st. So we just ended our grant um, for 2024 um, with awards coming in June. And what we're looking for is just to assist our community and our organization. And I'll just read our mission statement because I think that does talk a lot about it. But the Cook County Community Fund is there to promote private giving for the public good and to enhance the quality of life for the citizens of Cook County by attracting charitable gifts, making philanthropic grants, and providing responsible financial stewardship and community leadership. And yeah, so I would encourage you to either ask questions afterwards or go online. We have all of our information there for our grants. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thanks again, Tyler, for working with us to put this on. Thank you, Leo. We're going to turn it over to our online people next. So uh, Michelle Morris is up first. Hello. I'm so glad to be able to join you all this way. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. Um, I'm with the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation. Um, I, as we, as uh, Leah mentioned, serving serving Cook County, we serve all of Northeast Minnesota, all of Northwest Wisconsin, and the seven sovereign tribal nations in the region. Um, so very large service area, we have about 50 different competitive grant funds. Um, we also provide um, organization endowments um, and, and also work on community leadership. So for example, one of the areas that, that we work in is on disaster resilience with the Ready North Network. Um, in terms of, of grant making, we have, um, we're, we're headed toward two, two grant cycles per year. Um, we've been going through strategic planning um, and really trying to have more of an effort of um, making our competitive grant process fit with the, the size of the funds. Um, some of, it's a broad range of, of funding amounts, um, as well as um, purpose and um, areas served. So um, we, we updated our website, I guess it's been about a year and a half ago, um, trying to make that easier. I, I try to be available um, to, to have conversations. So if, if you're interested in applying for, um, for a grant, I'm happy to talk, talk through with you. Um, the more I know what you're, you're applying for and, and looking for funding to support, um, the more I can help direct you to, to the specific funds. Um, happy to do that. I, I really enjoy getting to connect and, um, if I know funding outside of the community foundation, I'm also happy to, to help connect you that way too. Um, our next grant, as Leah mentioned, our, our um, um, spring cycle just closed last Friday um, with notifications for that coming out um, in, in uh, end of May for, for June starts. Um, we've, we're also um, in kind of the final stages of, of uh, the launch of a, a new grant um, funding priorities. So opportunity, resilience, and belonging are, are areas we've been working in for quite a while, but really trying to focus in more on what that means and, and direct funding toward that. Um, those, those are some bigger grants. Um, so those can go up to $50,000 for opportunity, resilience, and belonging. And for transformation, 
Um, those can go up to $100,000 per year for up to five years. So really trying to have, have a greater impact with that funding. Um, those are included in our fall grant cycle. Um, so those applications will open in early August um, with an October 1st deadline. And again, I'm, I'm happy to talk through um, those or any other funding opportunities that the Community Foundation has um, and, and to help try to find a fit. Looking forward to, to questions, but I know we have a lot of people to, to hear from. So um, I think I'll wrap up there. Michelle. Well, next up will be Northland Foundation and the other Michelle. Ah, yes, yeah, so we'll keep it easy and, and stay with the, the names here. I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint and as I do, I'll uh, um, introduce myself. I'm, I'm Michelle Ufford. I am the Director of Grant Making here at the Northland Foundation. Um, many of you probably know my predecessor, Eric Torch. Um, I, I took over for Eric after he joined the Lloyd K. Foundation, um, Lloyd K. Johnson Foundation about eight months ago. Uh, and I come to Northland with a really long background in workforce development here in the Northeast region. So it's a lot of the same and similar sort of priorities. And I'm going to whip through this really quick, but I'm happy to make this available. Um, and, and also, as the Michelle mentioned, available for any questions after the fact, uh, as may arise. But the Northam Foundation is one of six Minnesota Initiative Foundations that were established in the early 80s with an economic downturn by the McKnight Foundation that really wanted to do something positive for greater Minnesota, but didn't want to tell, uh, tell us what to do from the metro which we all like out here in greater Minnesota. Um, and Northland Foundation is really the same. We, we, we understand that communities know what they need better than we do. And so we're here to support nonprofits and um, uh, municipal entities. And I'll talk a little bit more about that next um, throughout the seven county region. And you see our mission here uh, is really supporting thriving communities where everyone feels they can belong and can thrive. Um, as an organization, we have kind of three legs of our stool, so to speak. We've got business services, uh, which includes, uh, we house the Small Business Development Center here for the Arrowhead region, and we are also a community development finance institution. So we do a lot of gap financing for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, we have operated um, several programs of our own through the years. Uh, age to Age may sound familiar to some of you. Uh, rural Integrated um, Community or the, the Integrated Rural Community Aging Program is something that we've actually had pretty active participation from Cook County. Uh, and then the third leg is the grant making arm of the organization, which is one I oversee and the one I'm here to share information with you folks about. Um, so from a process standpoint, the types of grants that Northland offers, uh, most of what we do are actual general operating grants, which, you know, we you know is a little bit unusual in the grant making world. Um, organizations that are eligible for those are nonprofits that are headquartered here in the Arrowhead region. Um, program restricted funds are available to organizations that maybe do work here in the Northeast region, but aren't headquartered here. They do have to have some kind of physical presence, um, uh, staffing presence here in the region to be eligible to apply. But the vast majority uh, of, of, of um, funding that we do is for general operating. Uh, we have a floor of $10,000. We don't, I mean, technically have a ceiling. There's a ceiling, obviously everywhere. Uh, we have the ability to approve $50,000 and less grants in house with, without going up to our board of trustees. Um, and so that, that gives you kind of a general idea of the kinds of, of funds that we can offer. We have quarterly grant rounds. The due dates are listed there before you. Um, and so there are plenty of opportunities throughout the year to apply. Um, so it's mostly nonprofits that, that we're making uh, grants to, but also government entities like municipalities or counties, school districts, higher education institutions are also eligible for program restricted, uh, not so much for the general operating side of things, but as long as you're operating some kind of program within the, uh, the boundaries of our priority areas, then you are eligible to apply if you're a, an organization of those types. Um, like to start with the pre-application inquiry. It's it's not required to submit an application, but it's been actually kind of helpful for me being new to this role and learning what's going on out there in the region and helping to connect the dots between organizations in all corners of the seven county area. Uh, and so always happy to have a conversation about what your organization does and whether it is a good fit. Uh, we certainly don't want to waste anyone's time writing an application that isn't going to, to, to go anywhere. So we do encourage that initial inquiry piece of it. Um, what, things that we don't fund are requests specifically for the purchase of equipment uh, without associated programmatic components. Uh, we don't fund capital campaigns. We cannot replace traditional government funding that has been cut. Um, that is something that we do see periodically, especially from government agencies who 
maybe operated a program through funding through the state or federal government and that funding went away. That's not something that we can come in and, and replace. From a review process standpoint, with that quarterly cycle, keep that in mind. Um, we, we have a review committee that's made up of some staff and some uh, members from our board. Uh, that process takes about a month for the committee to review and, the, and they get together and make a set of recommendations for proposals to move forward to the site visit process, which is an in-person visit for me. And then I make a, a set of final recommendations to our president by the end of that quarterly cycle. So for us, it takes about 90 days from that due date to when an organization um, would know how they fare. You'll know where you stand as an applicant about 30 days after that due date. Uh, once that review committee meets, an organization who applies will know if they're moving on to the site visit phase or not. Um, but just note, you know, we're super flexible and an open organization and any grantee or, or applicant is welcome to call and make inquiries at any time. Here are our basic uh, program priority areas. Alignment with these is key, of course, for funding, and these are all listed on our website. One thing I would maybe note about all of these is that last one, that belonging, is a really kind of nebulous category here, and we're, we're working on refining um, uh, how we articulate what this means, but it really is more systematic efforts to help everyone feel like they've got a um, so we've had a lot of folks say, you know, belonging to us means that everybody can access our programs, and that's not exactly what we're looking for um, under that priority area. It's more initiatives that are really um, that are really focused on how we can encompass everybody in our community to be part of part of something. Um, and just wanted to mention super quick, we do have three other grant initiatives right now. Mata Uking actually is a, a mixed grants to individuals who are looking to uh, enhance culture and community uh, through a bunch of different uh, individual efforts. That's kind of an unusual thing. And there's three grant rounds per year for that. Youth in Philanthropy is a really neat um, effort that awards grants of up to $1,000 to youth-led programs. And those youth are writing their proposals. Our advisory board is made up of, of students and they make all the decisions. And it's just a really uh, great way to engage kids in, in the grant writing process. And then finally, I would just mention we're about to launch a new program through the state of Minnesota that's actually grants to businesses of $750,000 in annual gross revenues for us. Um, stay tuned for that. I highlighted the website down in the corner there. All of these programs can be found on the website along with our general grant making program. And I'm a minute and a half over. Thank you for your patience. I'll stop there. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Renee, I'm happy to come. I'm the first to say something about this. This is a fund that I get a lot of questions about, and I am always like, this is a fund that we should be all using in Cook County way more often than we do. And especially being a person that does programming in Cook County, I think often that would pay for the things that you guys come to me for and ask for. So, uh, with that being said, Renee, would you mind talking about what uh, you do there? Okay, my name. Can you can you see me? Yeah, good. Okay. My name is Renee Prout. First, going to apologize that I have a pretty good allergy attack going on today. So if you can't hear me, let me know and I'll try to talk louder. But I, um, I am the person that you would contact if you wanted to use our talent development grant. I work for the Northeast Minnesota Office of Job Training. We are now renamed and our name is JET, Jobs Empowerment and Training. So we have a grant that runs per our fiscal year, which is July 1st to June 30th, and it's $10,000 per grant year per employer if they are um, selected. So in order to apply, you would contact me. I put my email in the chat. You could contact me for an application. The thing is that training has to be done between July 1st and it has to end no later than June 30th of the following. <clears throat> so anything that's in process now has to end June 30th of 2024. Employees must be 18 years old, work full time, which is 32 hours a week or more. And the training is to upscale your business or to better your employee um, to try to, to avoid a layoff. It can't be a training that your employee has to have to keep their job. So it can't be CEUs. It can't be um, something they have to do to keep their licensure. It just has to be something that they don't need or but would your um, business would benefit from. 
So we do a lot of leadership trainings. We've we've done everything from CPR, first aid to for a kennel, um, all the way to welding and for Jamar. I mean, we we're all over the map. So if you don't think it's going to work, ask me and I'll let you know. <clears throat> you can apply for more than one training during the year. So, but it all has to be on one application. So an employer, let's say an employer wants to do four different trainings. They're going to use all the same people. That's fine. Mm -hmm. They're going to do four or five different trainings or using all different people. That's fine. We are going to cap, cap at $10,000. If your training goes over that $10,000, then you would be responsible for the difference. If your training is $12,000, you're paying two, we're paying 10. We also can pay for books or anything that is required for the training. So we do not pay for rental. We do not pay for mileage. We do not pay for food. Um, we don't pay for anything over and above the training itself. It's up to the employer to find the training that they want. We don't find the training for you, but we do have names of trainers that I can send to you if you're wondering, you know, who do I contact for this? I'm thinking we want to do this with our employer or our employees rather. You can train anywhere with the, Least amount of people we've trained is one, and the most is 149 so far. There's an in-kind portion through from the employers, and what that is, is you are going to pay your employees their, their wage for the day. If you pay their insurance, you're going to pay that for the day. If there's a mileage cost for the trainer to come to you, you're going to pay for that. Anything that you're going to pay over and above that would be your in-kind portion. <clears throat> um, if you're approved, I will let you know, and then we go from there because your employees, anybody taking the training will also have to fill out an application that's required by the state. They will fill out an I-9, uh, a privacy and a consent to share form. And with the I-9, they have to provide a current driver's license or an ID. We now can do Wisconsin employees as well, where when this first started, we couldn't do anybody even if they lived in Wisconsin. So now we can. Um, and they will have to provide a copy of their social security card. If they don't have that, we have some other ways around that. And they have to also, if they're a veteran, they would have to provide their DD-214. Um, these are not our rules. These are the state's rules. So this is where sometimes I run into a problem with employees. They don't want to give us the information. They're worried we're going to do something with it. But I always tell them if they have a credit card or a bank card, they've already given away more information than we're asking for. <clears throat> um, we don't allow anybody in the training who we do not have paperwork for. This has been a problem, so we have really clamped down on that. If so, if an employer is going to train um, five of their full-time employer employees, which they have to be full-time, which I said that, and they think they're going to put a few of their part-timers in there for the training because the training is going on anyway, uh, that is not allowed. If we do not have paperwork for them, they cannot take the training on our dime. I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end. I'll be happy to send anybody an employer application if they want it just to look over. I can send the employee one along as well. Um, just let me know what you need. And I really wish that the, there's been a few businesses up on your end that have taken advantage of this, but not very often. And I'm, I'm not sure if we're just not getting the word up there or sometimes people just don't believe us. None of this is taxable and none of this, uh, you don't have to read to pay it back. So employees always think if they do an I-9, they're going to get taxed on this training, and that is not true. So let me know what your questions are, and I'll be here to answer. Thank you so much, Renee. That's really helpful information. Hopefully people got something out of that that they didn't know before. Beth Kennedy, can you talk about Empty Bowls? Hi. So Empty Bowls is a program that's a national program and is global at this point. Um, but I'll, I'll just be talking about the local program. And uh, Empty Bowl's mission is basically to make people aware of the hunger needs in Cook County, and uh, we fill the gaps. So we don't actually, our basic 
grants that we give out are um, to kind of fill buy snacks for kids to to buy snacks for programs for for some meals if um, people are buying pizzas or whatever as they're having a, a youth program um, we last year um, gave out 27 grants to 27 nonprofits locally only and so um, our whole focus is Cook County we raised ninety nine thousand dollars this year and so we're going to be excited um, we've already had our Grant applications were due um, a week ago Friday, and we've gotten another 27, 28 grants this year. Um, so we'll be deciding who gets what money, and our um, top amount of money that we give is 5000 and this year almost everybody applied for 5000 so we don't have quite that amount of money, but we will be um, making our decisions shortly. And then uh, what we typically do is buy food gift cards, and um, sometimes we write checks to organizations like the school if they're going to be buying bulk food uh, for snacks. Um, but we're not replacing any food programs. Uh, you know, school schools now have breakfast and lunch, but we uh, typically are funding the grant uh, the snacks that people are needing. Um, so, anyways, we've got lots of lots of different money going out, and it's all based on the money that we've raised in this community. And uh, we also have a soup, supper, lunch that we have an event, but uh, mostly our, the money that we raise is from businesses, from individuals. And the soup supper is uh, just a wonderful event to, um, to just help people re recognize that there is food insecurity in Cook County. So I'll be happy to answer questions afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually going to start with Allison. Sorry, Allison. There was a quick switch. If you wouldn't mind, bulk race passes off the baby. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. <clears throat> Let me get my screen pulled up here quick. I know better than to try and talk and make Zoom adjustments at the same time. So just bear with me as I go into presentation. All right. Good morning or afternoon almost, everyone. My name is Allison McIntyre. Uh, my professional role in the community is as the Public Health and Human Services Director with Cook County. Today, I am here to share information on the North Shore Collaborative Five. So what is the North Shore Collaborative Fund? I probably have way more detail than anyone is interested in here today. So I'm going to kind of breeze through some of these slides and send the info out to Kelsey. Um, but essentially, the collaborative is one of 89 collaboratives across the state of Minnesota. These were established by the legislature in the 1990s to increase collaboration across systems that serve children and youth. Uh, in Cook County, we are a member of a joint powers board with Lake County. Um, and our collaborative is a um, integrated children's mental health collaborative and family services collaborative. Uh, the joint powers board includes Cook and Lake counties, Grand Portage, Lake and Cook County school districts. There are elected board members representing mental health service providers and corrections on the North Shore. Uh, the coordinating council, which I'm a member of, includes non-voting staff members from those entities, including public health and human services, both at the county and at Grand Portage Human Services, school superintendents, and other representatives from those other organizations. Our meetings are quarterly, and they're open to the public. I'm not going to go through the mission and vision here, um, but I'll say that the North Shore Collaborative has recently engaged in a strategic planning process. So we'll be reviewing a lot of the um, strategic goals and vision for how they operate as a collaborative. Uh, currently, those goals are promoting children's mental health from birth, birth to age 21, promoting developmental assets with community partners, and addressing barriers and improving access to resources for local families. One of those is the maintenance of the fund, uh, which I will share more about now. So the collaborative grants are designed to align with these five goals, uh, promoting and sustaining school length mental health services, addressing barriers and improving access to resources, 
increasing vocational development opportunities for older youth, supporting families whose children are transitioning back into the community from a treatment setting, and building, building developmental assets with North Shore. Uh, the North Shore Collaborative has a quarterly grant making process. <coughs> we just meet, met on February 7th to review the first quarter grant applications. So the next uh, due date for grant funds will be April 17th uh, to be reviewed and voted on at the May 1st, 2024 meeting. Some of the regional recipients for North Shore Collaborative Grant Funds include the Northwoods Food Project, a youth programming at the Grand Marais Playhouse, Cook County Higher Ed Doula Training, uh, Child Care in Lake County, uh, Public Health and Human Services has received funds to support our bike and pedestrian education, uh, the Community Center in Finland, ISD 166 Travel Club, and Lakeview Mental Health education. The grants range, uh, at least for the 2023 year, from $1,200 all the way up to $10,000. Uh, the North Shore Collaborative is funded through a, a range of sources, including the Collaborative Time Study, in which uh, organizations, including the school districts, public health and human services, are reporting to the state on activities with youth and families in the community, those generate state and rev, uh, federal revenue to support the grants. Uh, partner agency contributions, those organizations that are represented on the collaborative are also contributing uh, to that fund. And then there's miscellaneous and other income. Um, I did print out some applications here. You can see it's a pretty brief application, uh, front and back one page. And all of this is available on the North Shore Collaborative website as well. Uh, Trish, Trisha Scammerhorn is the coordinator of the collaborative and her contact information is listed here. She would be the best person to connect with if you have questions on the collaborative funding process. Uh, more information on the Public Health and Human Services Department in here as well. And that's cool. Happy to address questions when we wrap up. Wonderful, thank you, Alison. Next up is gonna be Grace on Zoom. Grace, would you mind? Hi everyone. I'm still a little slow with my, my Zoom skills, but I'm getting there. It looks like, uh, let's see, there we go. Okay, so I work with Allison at uh, PHHS and I'm gonna be talking about the Public Health Fund grants today. Um, so we are a department within county government of 34 people working in various areas to support the community. Our mission is to support the health, safety, and well-being of the community. Um, we've been administering the Public Health Fund since 2018. Prior to that, the Board of Commissioners was granting discretionary funds directly to community agencies, but at, at that point in time, they moved responsibility for the grant making process. So requesting proposals, reviewing applications and making funding recommendations into PHHS um, since the purpose of funding is really aligned with our mission as a department. So the group that, um, heads that up as a subcommittee of our Public Health and Human Services Advisory Council. We've been uh, taking this on now since 2018 and every year we get a little bit better at what we do. So last year in for the 2024 calendar year, we uh, recommended $150,000 in funding to eight grantees. So you can see our average award was a right around just under $20,000 and we had a range of funding between $5,000 and $62,000. This year is much like last year in terms of process, timeline, I'll get into that in a bit, but I did wanna, before I do that, talk a little bit about a new program that we have um, this year. Our um, one of our subcommittee members has an idea that he brought to our advisory council to put some funding aside to new and innovative programs. So it's kind of like seed funding. So 
we're setting aside a small portion of our total grant making funds for applicants that have not previously received funding through the public health fund. The applicants still must be a nonprofit or have a fiscal sponsor and the amount would be a maximum of $10,000. So we're gonna be working hard this year to get the word out about this new opportunity in the hopes that we'll have applicants with some new ideas um, coming to us with um, funding requests. So this is an annual process. Um, we will be sending out now any day the request for reports for our 2023 grantees. We're also going to be inviting them to share a little bit about their program with us um, and what they did with the funding in 2023. Then starts our 2020 or 2025 request cycle. So we'll be putting out an RFP and a media release in May. Uh, we'll have an info session in June and our deadline will be sometime mid to late June. So the exact date is still to be determined. Um, I see a little typo here. So we're also this year for outreach going to be trying to do a, a mailing to 501c3 organizations in the county just to let everyone know that this opportunity exists. Um, when I'm done presenting, I will put the link to our grant public health fund grant website um, in the chat so that folks can get more information there. Um, another thing that is new this year is uh, what our public health assess or what our community health assessment priority areas are. So every five years we do, it's sort of like strategic planning, but it's really on a community level. So we review health data, we come up with um, what, what we think priorities for, for action and for improvement are. And this is a really a community driven process. So there are public health and human services staff participating, but there's also community members from all over participating in this process. So we last year came together and uh, determined our priority areas, which are access to affordable housing, access to mental health resources and support for well-being, access to affordable quality childcare, access to transportation options, access to affordable healthy foods, and access to physical health services. So all of the grant requests that we receive need to be in line with these priority health areas, which again have shifted a little bit since last year because we went through this community health assessment process last summer. Um, our process, um, I won't go through this too in depth because I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but we have a volunteer group of grant reviewers that gets together to talk over applications. We have a common scorecard and we have a, a discussion on funding recommendations that then goes to the County Board of Commissioners for final funding decisions. So this is just a, a screenshot of what that scorecard looks like. Um, here's a list of our grantees for 2024. Um, again, this information is also available on our website. Um, and one thing to note, um, again, this is all contingent on the County Board of Commissioners and the demands they have on discretionary funding. So our group makes recommendations to the board and they have the ultimate decision-making authority for these grants. We're getting better and better every year when it comes to deciding how to make those recommendations to the board and run this process. Um, and one other note is this, we have a, um, this year and last year, a childcare wage enhancement program. So this helps, um, funds child care wages for child care workers. And so that is kind of a parallel track um, from the public health fund. So we want to make sure that all the child care providers are accessing resources through this wage enhancement program. That's again something that the Board of Commissioners has to decide about. So we will be accepting applications for um, child care wage enhancement type services with the caveat that if this wage, this wage enhancement program continues, that we would then um, 
funnel all those requests through that program rather than through the public health fund. So if people have specific questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk that through. Um, and that's about it. So I'll stick around on the Zoom uh, landscape if people have questions for me. Otherwise, feel free to reach out via email or phone. Um, I put my contact information in the chat. Well, thank you, Grace. Then I toss it to Charissa. Hello, Teresa Bynum. I'm with the Cook County Grand Murray Economic Development Authority. We'll just start. We'll just go EDA from here on out um, to be short. I just wanted to share a couple funding opportunities. Um, one being our EDA Business Development Fund. This is a grant program um, administered through the EDA just to support uh, small businesses, entrepreneurs, nonprofits uh, located in serving Cook County. Um, our funding is established yearly through our operations budget. Um, our 2024 allocation was 200,000. Um, so what types of grants are we uh, funding or funding goals, I guess? It's encouraging economic development in Cook County. That could be um, new business creation, expansions, um, creation or retention of workforce, um, so staff. Um, sustainable development, or maybe providing um, unmet services in the county, like childcare, um, unmet uh, workforce housing. Um, four and nonprofits are eligible for this funding. Um, I think the only ineligible would be like cities, towns, other local units of government. Um, I guess some recent funding examples could be like construction repairs of your building, um, maybe some facade improvements. It could be upgrading equipment, repairs to equipment, um, staff training or certifications. Um, we've done some child care startup costs. Um, I think ineligible is pretty much just staff salary, salaries, management fees, or you know acquisition of land for like holding purposes. So some of that. Our application process is pretty straightforward. It's just you know submitting an application to me with any backup documentation. So your pro forma, maybe quotes of what you're seeking funding for. Um, and then we have a grant review committee, um, which is uh, three members of our EDA board. They review it, work with me. We might work back and forth uh, with the grantee, and then we bring it to our EDA board um, to approve a grant agreement. And then you purchase the items, you submit receipts, and we reimburse, reimburse you for those. Um, yeah, the other program I wanted to highlight was Cook County's Revolving Loan Fund. This is loans to businesses located um, or to be located. So if they'll do some relocation expenses um, within Cook County. Typically it's for profits, but they do make some exceptions um, for their loans for not for profits if, if uh, county commissioners approve the application. Um, these are really to kind of encourage public private investment. They, um, they want to work with bank loans. And so with your application, you're submitting whether you're seeking a loan to be a companion to an existing like private bank institution or um, because you couldn't get funding. So you submit kind of a letter of why you couldn't. Um, there's two buckets. There's one for kind of land fixed assets like a building um, for repairs, purchase. And then there's um, like a machine and equipment uh, fund. So loans available anywhere from um, I think it's 500 is their starting or 5,000 and then up to 250,000 <laughs> um, loans that are 75,000 or less. They, uh, I think they go like one and a half percent over sort of the market rate interest rate. Um, anything over 75,000 is just market rate or they're matching who your other lender is. So your private lender. Um, I won't go too in the weeds on some of the lending stuff because it can get kind of dense there. But I did want to mention that Michelle talked about the Deed Promise Act, and the EDA will be um, partnering with Northland Foundation to do technical assistance hours for those eight weeks that that application opens. We don't know those dates yet, but we'll um, send that out broadly in the community because um, they'll be for eight weeks. We'll do three hours a week, and we'll kind of go around with the loops in one week up the trail, grand Marais. Have any questions? Wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. I'm going to have you go up next, Val, but I'm going to have to move the camera. So just one second. So okay. Get started at home. <laughs> I'm just my camera moving. We're going slowly. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Where are you good? Were you able to pull up my... I didn't get them. Oh, okay. I sent it. That's okay. Um, yeah. Apologies. It's, it's so nice to actually be back with 
humans in a room all together, but it, it almost for us who are used to being on Zoom and presenting, uh, it's a little awkward. And so I actually forgot the PowerPoint. <laughs> But I'm in person and I do have printed copies of it and it will be available after. So I'm Valerie Morosco Eliason. I'm the executive director of the North Shore Healthcare Foundation. Uh, I want to reiterate that we are a, an independent uh, nonprofit. We are not part of the clinic or the hospital. Um, we are actually celebrating our 31st year this year in, in Cook County as an independent nonprofit. That's dedicated to improving um, health care and healthy living in Cook County. So we we're actually established in 1993 um, by a group of committed citizens um, dedicated to improving health and wellness of Cook County and who in the community. It was initially referred to as the Clinic Development Committee. Um, these folks, the original board, assumed a leadership role um, in supporting projects that had a significant impact on the health of our rural community or larger health projects. Um, and we're still committed to providing leadership in sustaining and improving the health of individuals and communities um, today is still a core value. So the North Shore Healthcare Foundation, as I said, is an independent uh, organization benefiting healthcare and healthy living in Cook County. Our mission is to proactively identify opportunities to expand equitable health care and healthy living in Cook County and champion solutions through funding, education, and advocacy. And our vision is a healthy community for all in Cook County. Uh, our values are at the, at the forefront of all we do, and we really believe in the possibilities of people, organizations, businesses, and governments all working together to create a healthy community. Um, our values represent what we believe in, what we stand for, and how we approach everything we do at the North Shore Healthcare Foundation. And they provide a guideline of, uh, of decision-making at all levels for our organization. So in grants, um, for grant applications, part of how we evaluate those are how do they line up to the values of the Healthcare Foundation and our priorities. And our primary contributions um, for creating a healthy Cook County lie in our ability to provide and leverage funding, um, provide opportunities, uh, educational opportunities, and then in, in also including convening partners to address critical health issues facing the community. So. We are a huge collaborator. We often bring folks together uh, to um, to tackle a key issue and become a working group or a task force. You may have heard of the Oral Health Task Force that started with an idea with the foundation and it grew and was able to grow up and move out on its own as an independent, uh, well, that's a, a unique example. It actually got um, absorbed by the Satchews Mountain Clinic so that it's for its sustainability and long-term availability to folks in the community. Um, we also developed care partners of Cook County that started with an idea in the foundation and as an incubator, we incubated it until it could also become an independent organization um, that is still a critical asset in Cook County. So that's part of what we do aside from grants. Um, we develop programs to fill the gaps and um, grow them, run them, expand them until they are able to either be, um, become part of the appropriate organization or go out on their own to be independent nonprofits. So um, I'm gonna skip over some of the stuff you already know, but I wanna just show show an example of you, you heard in our mission um expanding equitable health care and healthy living so we like to use this graphic in our strategic planning and in our materials but show the difference between equality and equity and we really have moved to a prevention focused um mindset in the in the programs that we develop and incubate as well as the programs that we uh, award grants to so focusing on equitable health care and healthy living in our, our rural community. Um, what are our priorities? Uh, we just, in the late fall, reevaluated what our key priorities are, and um, that aligns with the public health and human services 
uh, community health needs assessment and improvement plan. So the foundation really wants to be able to support um, the community and work in, in parallel with the, with public health and the health of community health improvement, no, community health needs assessment and improvement plan. So looking at the results of that plan, um, we updated our priorities to in include children's services and family well-being, accessible health care that can encompass all kinds of things. So our workforce, healthcare workforce development initiative um, is, is under that priority. Um, mental health and wellness for all ages. Previously in our first strategic plan, it was children's mental health and substance misuse. But um, you know, we're seeing since the pandemic and just in the world that we live in today, the need for mental health services for folks of all ages. Um, as I mentioned, we're an incubator and a catalyst. Um, we provide and leverage our, our funding as a grant maker. We deliver three black grants each year um, to what we call the big three. Um, it's not a given, but depending on budget and, and our big three's plans, we will deliver up to $10,000 of funding as a lump sum um, for Care Partners of Cook County is one of our black grantees. Uh, emergency services uh, coordinated through uh, emergency management. Um, they kind of pull everybody together and emergency services work collaboratively to decide what's the highest priority need in the county um, and put in a joint request so that it can benefit excuse me, the most amount of people in Cook County. Because previously, before block grants, we had one fire department applying for X for $500. And then we had another fire department applying for the same thing for $1,500. And maybe one fire department is that, or EMS unit is not comfortable writing grants, but you have another that is. So, you know, the funding was going, um, to different places and, and wasn't exactly the most effective and efficient way of delivering that. So emergency um, services became a block grantee. And then Cook County Higher Ed, huge partner in delivering our healthcare education in Cook County and providing so many opportunities uh, to folks here. Um, they've been a wonderful partner in, in so many of our initiatives. But then we also deliver uh, semi-annual grants open to the community. So the deadlines for our grants are May 1st and October 1st. Doesn't matter if it follows on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's always May 1st or October 1st. Um, and sometimes that gives you extra time, you know, because so many of us wear multiple hats and you might be doing your grant writing <laughs> on a weekend when you're fitting in through other, your other responsibilities. So, um, that's overseen by our funds distribution committee that's made up of our, our board members. They're all volunteers, um, but we use, we have an evaluation tool, um, you know, so that's consistently evaluated uh, each application. And as I mentioned, our values are part of that. How does it line up with those key priorities? Grants are going to be prioritized um, those that you know really line up and fall under those key priorities, addressing it, one of those needs in the in the county, are going to take preference. Uh, and then, so that's usually done the evaluation done in the weeks following the May first application, and we really try to bring a recommendation to the June board meeting. Our board meetings take place the second Monday of the month, so um, you know. Sometimes it can be, say, the 8th or it can be the 15th, but usually around mid-June, um, all applicants will be notified if you're successful or if um, it didn't make the cut that round. Since 1995, the North Shore Healthcare Foundation has delivered over a million dollars in grant funding, $1,260,000, which has... Um, really extended out to a ton of different programs. So we, we work with um, all of our local schools, all of our local healthcare agencies, a huge variety of community programs, um, Cook County, uh, different units, 
we are a big partner with public health and human services, as well as Grand Portage Health Services and Human Services up there. They're a partner in our restorative justice program. That's one of the incubation programs that the Healthcare Foundation is providing leadership for, as well as in the last year, our new truancy solutions program. We have a student liaison taking, um, we're really trying to take a, um, an early intervention approach to connect with truant students. There can be so many reasons for truancy and really um, get to know them and the reasons behind the truancies and connect them with the resources they need. And then she is also providing ongoing mentorship that's in group form as well as individual form and working collaboratively with the county attorney's office and our court system, uh, the sheriff's office and law enforcement and the school system. So that is overseen by a collaborative um, working group or advisory committee uh, with representatives from each of those organizations. So those are two of our uh, incubation programs. And then just in the fall, uh, late fall, the board voted to take on the early childhood hub because there is such a need childhood services to create healthy kids and healthy families in Cook County. So that is now part of the North Shore Healthcare Foundation. So over the next few years, we are going to be building uh, early childhood development services. So uh, we are in the process of that transition with from Sachi's Mountain Clinic because it was temporarily living there while they had this uh, early childhood hub grant. But we are um, we have already built, starting to build the new coalition of partners. People are very excited about this. Um, so that's exciting and that's it. It takes a village, so we are we are kind of leaning towards uh, calling it that the Cook County and Grand Portage Early Childhood Village. So pulling in all the partners to really address what uh, the ex exact needs are, what the challenges are, and then how we overcome that and deliver integrated early childhood services. So that's kind of exciting. I do have a handout that shows. Um, all of the grants that we have awarded uh, over the last several years, going back to 2021. Uh, in 2023, it was our biggest year ever. We actually funded $129,984 in grants because we created the workforce health, investing in our future healthcare workforce solutions program and invested in the simulation mannequin technology that's now available at the hospital um, for use uh, to increase the number of EMTs and EMRs we have in the community so that they don't have to leave and go training outside. Uh, CNAs for our care center. Um, over the last year, the number of, of EMTs available for the ambulance has increased drastically because of the not only the uh, new accredited curriculum that's available, but because we have that technology for use by all of the physicians, nurses, uh, all of the uh, emergency response units to do their recertifications. Um, so we like to partner and be collaborative and really address the, the key issues in the community. Um, but, you know, we have funded everything from uh, we the LOT program, the Learning Opportunities Through Stories program uh, with, from the North Shore Co uh, Collaborative um, to the, the simulation technology that I just mentioned to um, a collaborative transportation solution for seniors uh, to in, in, improve accessibility. So, so we'll, uh, we'll be having that handout that I can send out. Yeah, to yeah. There's so there it just really shows the ripple effect of what the North Shore Healthcare Foundation does um, as an independent nonprofit. Um, so that's that's the foundation. Um, we don't, one thing I want to mention is we don't make grants to individuals. It's we to qualify um, community organizations and initiatives. Uh, need to be a qualified nonprofit organization or have a partnership with a fiscal sponsor. Um, we do fund uh, initiatives if you are if you have a fiscal sponsor in place. 
No, I'm going to pray people come see you afterwards because it sounds like there's a lot going on there. There is a ton going oh, on. Yeah. America, so yep. You're good. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those at the end. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Erica, again, it's going to take a transition of the camera. So hold on. It's very slow moving. All right. We can talk forever about the nurse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming in on close. You want me to go upstairs? Yes, thank you. Linda, you want me to see? Nope, you're good. My camera's tapping. It goes a little slow. Okay, on to Erica. Thank you so much, Erica. Okay. Hi, I'm Erica Kirsch. I know I've met many of you already. Um, I am a grants program officer with the Lloyd T. Johnson Foundation. Um, I just started with the foundation in September. Um, so. So I'm used to philanthropy and I'm really enjoying it. Um, but uh, so the Lloyd Johnson Foundation uh, is focused on uh, writing grants that support uh, quality of life along the North Shore with a primary focus on education as well. Uh, we provide scholarships to Cook County High School grads um, as part of our mission to support education. Um, our service area is all along the North Shore, uh, Cook County, Lake County, and then the Duluth area as well. Um, we support nonprofit organizations and also schools. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we provide um, both um, project and program support, capacity building capital support, and also general operating support for our grantees that we've had a long-standing relationship with. Um, we have a pretty broad range of interest areas that we support, uh, including arts and culture, community and economic development, uh, education, environment, and social welfare. Uh, so our application process starts out with an informal inquiry phase. Um, we don't have a letter of intent anymore. Uh, it's just a, you can reach out to me. I'm the primary contact uh, to start the process. Reach out to me and let me know um, what you're thinking of, and we can talk through what, what the possibility is for how we could support the organization. Um, we, uh, our grants are offered on a quarterly basis. So our timeline is posted on the website, but for first quarter grants, that would look like um, reaching out uh, by actually December 15th. Uh, and then the application would be January 15th. Um, and after we have gone through the inquiry phase, um, I'm just checking in and making sure it's a good fit. Uh, we will reach out to you then um, a month before the applications are due and let you know what we recommend applying for. During our inquiry phase, we're just building up a slate of interest. Um, we do get more requests than we are able to fund, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and so based on the interest that we get overall, we'll make a recommendation on um, how much to apply for, or if, we're, if it's a good fit or potentially and we'll hold off for a different grant round. Um, but we we try to have, um, we try to invite applications that represent our broad interest areas and our geographical areas that we serve. Um, Cook County is 32%, at least last year, 32% of our grants um, to go to Cook County organizations, which I love. I, I'm local, I work remotely for the foundation up here. So, of course, I especially. <laughs> We've done all of grants and service areas really amazing. Um, so, um, after you've submitted an application, we schedule a site visit, and Eric or I, Eric is our director, um, either I or both of us will come and meet with you all. We really like to have that connection and get to know you more and answer or ask any questions that weren't, that didn't fully come through in the application. It's nice to just hear from people, have a conversation. You can get a, a better sense of all that the application encompasses. And then 
we share that and make a recommendation to our board. And ultimately, they're the ones who make a decision um, on the application. They will vote on that at their quarterly board meetings. Um, so a little bit more about the our grant history. Like I said, 32% of our grants have gone to um, the Kukwani area. We've also um, we've been um, making efforts to um, provide grants for Grand Port Portage, um, in addition to Lake County and uh, St. Louis County. I should should have mentioned that. And there's also some grants that are for the whole North Shore. Like there's some statewide organizations that we'll work with, especially environmental organizations, have projects that are focused on the region. Um, not just one county. Um, so in 2023, um, we awarded 1.2 million grant and grants, um, which included about 50,000 in short form grants. And short form grants are anything that are less than $3,500 or less. Uh, we accept short form grant applications throughout the year. Um, so, and then 1.1 million ish <laughs> in um, full form or long form grants, um, those quarterly grants. Uh, our largest area that we've supported in 2023 was social welfare, with program support being the area of interest that we provided the most support to. That was 38% of our giving in 2023. That's about all I have, unless you all have questions. Well, I know we'll have questions. Yeah, you'll oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna talk over Linda, but again, my camera is just gonna be as slow as my finger, so it'll be just a second. Hands across all of you, so you get to all have this great visual of it. I'll let you know when it's there. I can see. I'm yeah. Just... yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. I just love to hear from Linda about the right. County Chamber and visit Cook County. Thank you so much, Linda Jurek. I'm executive director of both the Cook County Chamber of Commerce and visit Cook County. I'm going to start first with the Cook County Chamber of Commerce because it's not a lot of money. Um, it certainly has some impact for our chamber members. That's the Great Place Project. Um, this fund is uh, exclusive to chamber members. And it uh, helps enhance the business, whether it be a bench in front of their store, um, a bike rack, um, telescopes and Schroeder, one of those things. Um, it's $500 to $1,000. Um, presently, I'm working with the Visit Cook County side of things, trying to double that fund for this year um, to be uh, $6,000. If I'm successful getting the money from Visit Cook County to match $3,000 from the chamber, you will hear about that um, at the end of April, beginning of May, um, about the Great Place Project. And feel free to call me. Um, these are things like the ping pong table that you saw in for many years in the library lawn. That is all part of the Great Place Project and funded through the Cook County Chamber of Commerce Foundation. I've been talking all morning about this subject with Visit Cook County. Um, as you all are aware, Visit Cook County was successful last year renewing a special 1% lodging tax here in Cook County. 3% uh, of the lodging tax that we collect is under state statute 469.170. And uh, that 1% is something that's unique to Cook County. Um, and that was something that was put in place when we came together as Visit Cook County with the three tourism associations, maintaining their influence over their 1% that was collected in their area. I feel that that is one of the backbones of strengths for our organization because we still have those three tourism associations that are very active in their very unique geographical areas. Um, what does that mean for us? We have four boards of directors on the Visit Cook County side of things and one board of director on the chamber side of things. So we manage five boards of directors down there in our office downtown. Um, the 1% funding program, um, I, we were just telling Kelsey when she asked us, like, this should have been a month ago for us. Uh, the 1% funding program 
where uh, not-for-profits and profits alike request funding from that 1% bucket um, just closed. Now that said, if you had something special that came up, I would always take a phone call and I would always bring it toward those tourism associations. Um, this morning, um, we met with the Lutz and Tofty Tourism Association. So this would be one of three meetings that will occur in the next week. And I just wanna give you a little background of the influence because I don't know that people really understand um, the depth of the funding that happens through that special 1% lodging tax, not a local tax, it's a tax collected from our visitors when they put their head in a bed in Cook County. Um, so as we came out of COVID, because of course we weren't really supposed to get, you know, we were supposed to do a whole lot of events and program and we didn't get to, um, that budget coming into our 23, 24 fiscal year was just shy of $900,000. And all those dollars went back into our community um, supporting events and programming. There's people in the room right now, North House Folk School, WTIP, and smaller um, events that uh, occur, the Curling Club. There's all kinds of all kinds of folks that get dollars. Graham Ray Playhouse, I, the list goes on and on and on. What we do as far as building collaborativeness is today, the like I said, the meeting was with Lutz and Tofty Tourism Association. Um, that's upwards of $380,000 that they are allocating back into the community. Next Monday, we'll meet with uh, the Grand Marais Area Tourism Association and then Tuesday, the Gunflint Trail Association. And um, many times we, I will make a recommendation that whatever the program and initiative is will affect the whole county in a good way. So you can all come together and you know contribute to that program, tourism associations. And that happens quite often. Next year, hopefully um, you'll hear about this. If you wanna look at what the program looks at right now, you can go to visitcookcounty.com, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, click on the partner link, and you will see a link there that will bring you into an entry level of getting those uh, dollars requested. Um, it will select whether your program is exclusive to a geographical area like the Gunflint Trail. Chickwalk every year gets dollars from us that is funneled through the Gunflint Trail Association. Art Along the Lake, Big Fall Studio Tour, supported by all tourism associations. So it's layered. It's really good and it's really something I'm proud of in leading both uh, the tourism associations and Visit Cook County because I feel that the impact is so great for our for-profits and not-for-profits in bringing events here. The one thing I just will end it with is what we're challenged with all the time is really um, bringing a 12-month secure economic environment. We all have heard of shoulder seasons. We're now referring to that at, at, at Visica County and with our boards as our opportunity seasons. We see November as a time where we can grow visitorship here in Cook County. So when it comes time to doing e an event, one of the events we talked about this morning was, yes, if you all remember our um, fall uh, Lake Superior Jazz Festival, which we were able to host one weekend, and we really were feeling some st one weekend before Papa Charlie's burned, um, and so we're really looking at what we can do in November, early December, April, early May, whether it's a songwriter series, whether we can have another art crawl of sorts, but really bringing people here in what is, um, of course, a community and county that is so highly impacted by tourism. And with that, I think I've said enough. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Linda. You bet. Thank you, Nick Anna, again with the camera. And then I have a question for the as we're thinking about that, I would love everybody that has received funding in some way from one of these grantors to raise their hands, just so you can see some of the impacts in the room. That's awesome. Um, those of you online, you didn't see that at all because uh, my camera is slow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are just so grateful for uh, the funding that you guys have all contributed in so many ways to our community. I now want to open it up to questions for those that are online as well as those that are in person. So if you have a question that you're dying to ask, ask please raise your hand. Or if you're online, uh, please raise your hand on here too, or uh, put your little note in and I will make sure to read it up. And grantors, if you are online and you have the ability to do so, could you turn your camera back on so they can see your lovely faces? Any questions we're having? Kelsey, can I add one more thing? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be missed. The chamber side of things, 
Um, the, one of the biggest things for the Cook County Chamber is that we have a, and a third of our budget goes to a full-time lobbyist. So um, that's not a grant program, but it certainly is important to our community, Cook County Higher Ed. We go down we talk to our state lawmakers and we secure funding. This year, for instance, North Shore Waste Transfer Station is top of the heap. So it's not a grant program, but it certainly is a group of um, very, very dedicated community members and businesses vying for things that make our lives easier, happier, healthy here in Cook County. Thank you. That's very helpful. And uh, those of you that are seeing in person, they can now see you online all as a big group. So if you could raise your hand, they'll know. Maybe you just kept talking kind of only. <laughs> so any questions for Heather? Go ahead. I have one for Michelle Efford or maybe Teresa. The new deed promise that? act? Yeah. Can nonprofits apply to that? As far as we know so far, yeah. They haven't done their like request for proposal that hasn't come out, but from, okay. the, from our understanding, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep, I think just to tag on to that, there's going to be a restriction of a certain percentage of income that needs to be earned uh, like a private business would. And so that's one of the, we are just waiting on some very final, final pieces from Dee before we can actually kick this thing off. And that's one of them is what that percentage looks like and then how we verify that with the tax returns. Um, and so it's looking like at this point that that program is going to launch on the 26th. Don't quote me on it because we're still waiting on the state, but that's our best guess. Right now. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for seeing within the room or online? Go ahead. Kelsey, I'll uh, uh, Chris over nine. And I ask him, this is a question of a half of a sequence here. So we're going through an organizational change right now. And we'll be putting together a plan over the next few months to uh, raise funds sufficient to recruit a new executive director. Um, but that's something that's probably outside the scope of, or beyond the scope of some of the organizations we're talking about here, but I'm wondering uh, a couple questions. One, are there, you know, partnering opportunities with, with foundations that would uh, facilitate our working with some of the other larger foundations? Um, technical help to, to, to help us to uh, think through putting together a, a, a plan for the organization to scale up uh, with, with a more sustainable full time director. Mm -hmm. And then that too. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a tell you grant. Is anybody that wants to respond to that about foundations that might be able to support uh helping create a strategic plan or helping through that process? Yeah. What is the organization again? I didn't it's, a, it's called the Cook County Local Energy Project. It's, okay. a, it's a clean energy organization around since 2008. Um, and which is kind of going through some more organizational changes at the moment. And, and so I really, really I think the Question is not who are the bigger foundations. We kind of know some of us, who some of those are. It's more, you know, are is there are there is there some coaching and help and, and partnering up with them getting some of the more local foundations that um, can help us build credibility and help us build a strong plan for mm -hmm. approaching some of these larger larger projects. Yeah, yeah, it's, I can um, answer for the strategic planning portion. I know North Shore Collaborative just went through a strategic planning process with the Arrowhead Regional Development Corporation, and they do strategic planning. I don't know if that's specifically support to nonprofits, but it might be worth looking into. Grant support for folks that are going through strategic strategic planning in the past. So we should. <laughs> and I'd also say if anybody from any of the foundations has any great with, they know that uh, the nonprofits in the community are always looking for a new voice to bring to help with those conversations. Great. Thanks very much. Anybody else got any questions? You guys got some time. You can think about all the people you saw. There's a lot of conversations that came up. So I can see how you might. Be a little overwhelmed with where you're there you want to start with. Anybody online and seeing a variety of people online? Okay, back to you guys in the room. Pressure's on.
Plus Linda. Um, so the Great Place project that you said you'll be announcing the end of April, early May, when it would be available. Yes. Yeah, I'm like I am trying to get some dollars. What came out of the chamber originally was um, something that would be specific to Grand Marais, asking Grand Marais area tourism to match the funds um, to do some kind of streetscape. You know, think of common, beautiful flower pots or something. And then I went, put on the break, we're a countywide chamber. So to um, develop a program specific with and, you know, for Grand Marais doesn't work, which then I pivoted and said, I'm just going to ask each of the tourism associations for $1,000 to match the three that we can commit from the Chamber Foundation. Great, thank you.